or not. The other thing I would also suggest is try to be as polarizing as you dare to be because indifference is what kills most businesses and everybody's scared to be anything other than vanilla. I, I know I spent 15 years in corporate world. I wasn't even allowed to post on LinkedIn without running it by our head of admins, which stopped me from posting at all because I was scared to death of her. Um, if you're watching this, yes, I was scared to death of you. I'm not anymore. Ha ah. um, <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's where it is for most people. You're in that corporate life. You dare not say anything that's, that's not vanilla because you've got the brand above you and you're, you're worried of doing damage to that and risking your job. But actually, as an individual and as a small business owner, you've got the right to choose your audience and choose who your clients are going to be. And actually, you know, um, I, I mentioned Stephen Bartlett's book earlier on. There's, there's a great bit in there about changing people's beliefs. And uh, you need people to believe that you're an expert and the way that you go about helping them believe that is by demonstrating to them with credible evidence that you're an expert in their field, that they resonate with 90% of the things that you say. So you might just be telling them things they already know, but because you're aligning with the 90% of things that they agree with, actually, when you tell them that, yes, we are the choice for you, people in your position, we're the service that's of choice for you because of these things, then they're going to start to see you as a credible export. And that's when the buy happens. So I think that's really important. And, I'm, and I've, I've been guilty of that in the past. I'm trying to do a little bit more polarizing stuff in 2024 but it's it's not easy it's it's hard right it is difficult it has to it has to align to the essence of your of your brand like your position and vision that you have and it's and then it comes down to what you feel comfortable and confident doing like just just being polarizing for polarizing sake i think is really difficult i can't remember who yeah. said it to me it's like if you're not if you're not turning some people away you're not attracting people to you either which I think is yeah. a really good way of sort of thinking of it because we are, you know, we are strongly opinionated and there is a tribe or a, an, an audience out there for, for you. And you just have to be confident and comfortable. And like you said, my stuff is mostly pretty vanilla, to be honest. I'm still figuring out my, my tone of voice, um, but I'll get mm -hmm. there. It's always a work in progress. I think you have to keep testing and learning and, and figuring that out, testing some of the way you construct the points that you make. Um, it's the only way to really kind of figure it out and see how, see what works and what doesn't. I think it's, I think it's easier to help other people than it is to work with your own content. Like it's as simple as that. I think, mm. you know, what, you're too close to the woods to see the trees. Um, you can't read and the so sometimes, uh, <laughs> I've not heard that one before. I'm going to steal that and pinch it. That's great. Yeah. Um, but exactly that, right? Like, like Stephen King, you don't get Stephen King to write his own dust jacket. Because he can't. He's written five, six hundred pages of a novel. He can't possibly distill that into three paragraphs. You hire someone else to come in and read the book and then say, this is the three paragraphs that define this book. Um, and so that's why I always recommend people, you know, budget willing um, and, and foresight willing to, to work with somebody external to go, what is our brand? What is our messaging? What is our strategy? And what's the best content that we can create? If, you, if you're going to do everything, that's not a that's not a cheap journey to go on as a, as a as an entrepreneur with not a lot of revenue. So there's shortcuts, there's things you can do to kind of stand yourself up and get there. Mm. But the danger in doing that is you forget to go back and start back at square one when you do have the revenue to do it. Um, and it's what will stop you getting to that next level of growth when you get to that point. Is if you want to be that much bigger, you need to at some point come back and put your big boy pants on or your big girl pants on and go, right, actually, I want to redesign. No, maybe, maybe a lot of what you're doing is actually right. Who knows? But um, I think you've got to get that external perspective to just to get that confidence before you move to the next stage of growth. Yeah, I've run, um, I run workshops with new clients that are considering their content output, like from, from you know, like, throwing it, like not throwing everything out, but kind of go, okay, well, what, what is actually working? What's not working? And I run, I run work, run people through workshops and there's some brilliant boards, um, that you can find on, on Miro, um, that will help you. And you can run through yourself with the relevant stakeholders to, to kind of try and piece together all the bits and pieces that you need to kind of help, um, give yourself an understanding of like who you are for, who you're not for. The pain points that you want to communicate about 
and you know the the messaging that you want to use to talk to those so you can do you can do some of that work yourself but i think there's tremendous value in working with um with a strategist and someone who's done a lot of this work before to kind of help you wrangle all those disparate voices and drive the alignment that you need from a ongoing production perspective um so you've got everybody pulling in the same direction particularly if you want to build a kind of culture of content creation um in the business which i think we are rapidly heading towards if we're not you know fully at already in terms of like the creator economy and people people creating their own presence and building their own audiences etc um so I think if you can if you could build a platform and a strategy for people to kind of look at and go, okay, I've got, I know what how to communicate about this, that, or the other, and who we're trying to reach. Like I can go out and do this stuff. I think is is like a, a, like just one of the best things you can do from a from a business perspective. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. Obviously, I'm biased, but I'd agree. Um, I, I, you know, but again, like I know how hard it is for me. It's like we talk about strategy. I struggle to do my own strategy. Um, I know loads of other people who, who are in their content strategy space who struggle with creating their own content because let's be honest, we're all here to, to achieve the main goal of our own business and the marketing and social media side of things is, is sometimes just a distraction for a lot of people. So it can, it can be very much like I'll procrastinate and procrastinate on doing my own videos and my own content. Like I, I need to do some right now. Like I know I need to do it and I'll be putting it off for the last week. And so I know that there's a valid market for me with my clients because they will feel the same. It's okay. We all, we all feel that way at times. Yeah. Um, but you know, taking that long view and understanding that there's real power. I don't have a website. I don't do pay per click. I don't do SEO, none of that. And I'm, you know, we're doing, we're doing well. Um, mm. for businesses that have all of the other bits in place, this could be the, the final key in the puzzle, um, to, to unlock that, that final bit of growth for you guys. Um, yeah, sure. I guess just before I go, um, cause we've kind of been on, we've been on about 30 minutes there, Dan. So I think we're going to, mm. we're going to pull this to a close. 